Good evening. Hope all of you are doing well. Today we're learning Maseches Chagiga Daf Vav. We are starting on the very, very last line of Daf Hayim Beis, and on the very last line of the two dots, it quotes a statement from our Mishnah. Our Mishnah, of course, had been discussing the Mishnah on Daf Beis at the beginning of the Masechta, in the beginning of the Parak, was talking about the uh, relevant uh, stakeholders for the mitzvah of Re'iya of Yerei'ek Kol Zechurcha. So there the Mishnah quoted a machlokas by Shammai Beis Hillel, and this is a piece of it. A child who is therefore exempt is defined as one who's not even able to sit on his father's shoulders in order to get from Yerushalayim to Harabais. The Gemara opens with a very practical question. That's great, but who got the kid to Yerushalayim in the first place? If you live in Bnei Brak, or if you live in Tel Aviv, or if you live in Beersheba, or Elad, how did you get to Yerushalayim in the first place? You're, you're measuring the kid's walking abilities or sitting on the shoulders from Yerushalayim to Harab. He had to get there. They had to get there. They weren't taking Eged buses back in the day. So the Gemara says, Maski Florab Zera, turning to the top of Avamarath, Ad Hacha Man Asye, who brought him up until this point? Amr Le Abaye, it must be Ad Hacha Demechaiva Ime Besimcha. I see, say, Ime, because the mother has an obligation, has a chiyuv as it relates to the mitzvah of Simcha. So, therefore, I see, say, Ime, the mother must have schlepped him from home to Yerushalayim. And then at that point, once they get to the to the perimeter of Yerushalayim, then we trigger the machlokas Beishamai Beis Hillel about what the thresholds are for defining a katan about getting from Yerushalayim to the Beis Hamikdash. In order to get some parameters on this simcha in which a woman is chayv, take a look at Rashi on the third line. Mechayva besimcha la los la regel v'lismoch b'chagim baila to go up on the chag to be happy on the chag with her husband. De al simcha nitztavu nashim. Women are also commanded to have simcha dechsiv besamachta. Ata uve secha. And ve secha, we know throughout Shas, has had a reference to an Isha, to a person's wife, and therefore she has an obligation. Mikan ve'elach, line three of the Gemara. And then once you get to Yerushalayim, from here on in, up to the Beis HaMikdash, im yocha lalos v'lechos diyado shal aviv Yerushalayim laharabais. If he's able to hold the hand of his father to get from Yerushalayim to harabais chayv, then the child is going to be obligated. Uh, albeit mid Rabbanon, granted he's a child. And the ilo pater, and if not, he's going to be exempt. So that's part one of the Gemara. Now, our Mishnah had framed out this machlokas between Beis Shammai and Beis Hillel, that Beis Shammai used the parameter of being able to ride on his father's shoulders, Beis Hillel used the parameter of holding his hand. So says the Gemara five lines down, Heshiv Rebbe, Tachas Beis Hillel, Ladibri Beis Shammai. Rebbe, speaking on behalf of Beis Hillel, posed a question to Beis Shammai. What do we know about uh, Sefer Shmuel? Vichana lo alsa. She did not go up to Shalayim Chana. Ki amra leisha. She said to her husband, "Adi gamel hanar v'haviyasiv." My child has to be weaned first. He's still nursing, and I have to make sure that he can be self-sufficient, and then I'll bring him. So it says the Gemara of Hashmuel, the Yachal Dirko Val Kseifo Shalaviv Hava. He could have easily sat on his father's shoulders. Nevertheless, we see that he wasn't brought, and therefore we see that Beis Shammai has to be wrong because Beis Shammai, Beis Shammai uses the parameter uses the parameter of being on someone's shoulders. So apparently Shmuel, while he was still not yet weaned, was able to sit on someone's shoulders for the length of time it took to get from the perimeter of Yushalayim to Tahar Abayis. So it says the Gemara that Rebbe, who was arguing on behalf of Beis Hillel, his father said to him, Amar le Avua, Rebbe's father said to him, Ulatamech, you're asking a good, a good kasha, but let's take it a step further. According to your logic, Tikshi lachana gufa, milo machayva besimcha. Why are you asking only about the kid? We know that she has a chayv in simcha, like we learned on the second line of the Gemara, the mechay ve'ime besimcha. So it says the Gemara, Ella, it must be that chana mefan kusa yeserta chazia be b'shmuel. She saw a certain uh, delicate nature, a certain weak, uh, weak constitution, as it were, of Shmuel, and therefore v'chasha be b'shmuel. She was worried about him l'chul shadu urcha that because it'll be a very taxing road for them to get from where they lived until the Yerushalayim, and therefore she held him back. And the Gemara ends on this note, and basically what we see is that there are exemptions to the mitzvah of, of chinuch, of a, of a mitzvah der Rabbanan for a katan. And if the, uh, just in this context at least, if the mitzvah der Rabbanan will be so taxing to the point that the child will not feel well, so then they would be, would be exempt. Uh, what would be the halachic difference? You know, how far do you have to start to walk for shofar for a child? Whatever the, the case may be, we might be able to make some applications from this Gemara to those cases. 12 lines down or so. Bayrub Shimon. Katan Chiger Ledibre Beishamai. 
What about a child who has an injured leg or injured legs, according to Beis Shammai, and Vesuma Ladid Beis Shneim, and a blind child, according to both Beis Shammai and Beis Hillel Mahu? Now remember, the reason why the first case, the reason why the first question is, uh, is only according to Beis Shammai is because Beis Shammai's parameter is whether or not he can sit on someone's shoulders. So a person can be a chiger, they can have an injured leg and still have the capacity to sit. So therefore, the Gemara asks the question the way that it did. In regards to a child that has injured legs, only according to Beis Shammai, what would the din be? And and according to a child who's blind, who can't see at all, what would the halacha be? Asks the Gemara, hey, chidami, what's the metzias of the case? Quarter of the way down. If you have a chiger, a lame, someone who's injured, and he's not curable, right? he's a quadriplegic, or the sumash paseach, or someone who's blind who will never be able to see again, permanent damage. There, we know that a gadol is exempt under those circumstances. So if that's the case, then there can't possibly be a mitzvah of chinuch for the katan. Katan mibay, all the more so we would not need that. So says the Gemara, what therefore must be the case? It must be that we're talking about a case where there is a physical injury on the legs that can be healed, or blindness that is only temporary. My, what then would be the halacha? In such a case, Abai answers as follows, a third of the way down, I'm Rabbi, kol hecha de gadol mechai midaraisa. In any case in which we have a scenario, a medical issue in which a gadol, an, an adult, a fully grown adult would still be chayev in the, whatever mitzvah we're dealing with, in this case with simcha, with aliyah l'regel, then katanami mechan chinan Then we have a mitzvah derabanan of chinuch for that child. So again, if the adult has a din doraisa of the mitzvah, the child has chinuch derabanan. But kol hecha de gadol pater midoraisa. But where you have that an adult is exempt midoraisa because of his medical issues, midorabanan katanami pater, then even... Then, then even a child would have nothing to do under those circumstances. We don't look at a mitzvah derabanan status of an adult mm -hmm. for a mitzvah that is doraisa and say, therefore, the katan is derabanan. No, we just outright exempt the child. So therefore, a child who has any of these medical issues of being blind or um, of having some injuries in the leg, even if they're only temporary, we would not then say that he is a chayv in the mitzvah midrabanan of chinuch of doing aliyah l'regah. We had said a very interesting machlokas in our mission about the cost of the korbanos, and we saw there was a, a machlokas where Beishamai had said, Beishamai Omer Mahariya, that the korban re'iyah was take kesef, and that the halacha by the chagiga is that they were half, and the, uh, the, the Beishamai had the, Beishel had the reverse. Now let's learn this b'risa over here, similar information to our Mishnah, uh, just about halfway down at the two dots, and then we'll uh, expand this into a full conversation about korbanos. Tan Rabbanon, Beishamai Omer Mahariya, Shtei Kesef, Ha'chagiga Ma Kesef, that when it comes to the korbanos of Olas Ri and Shalme Chagiga, the Olas Ri is worth two units of silver, and the korban Chagiga is worth half, only one unit of silver. Why is it that the Ri'iyah is worth more? Shariya Ola Kula Ligvoa, Masha'en Kein Chagiga, because a korban that is uh, the olas re'iya, that is a fully consumed korban on the Mizbeach, it's all legavoa, therefore it must be that it's more expensive, okay? The Odin furthermore says the Gemara, matzinu be'atzeres, we also find in regards to the halachos of Shavuos, shiriba be'henakasu be'olos yosr mi'bishlamim, we also see that when it comes to korbanos on Shavuos, that there are more korbanos of, of an ola than there are of a shlamim. So therefore we see a kadimus, we see some precedents in the Torah, where an ola has a greater level of chashivus than a shlamim. That's all of the backdrop for Shitas Beis Shammai. That's why he held that in regards to the price status of the Olas Re'iya relative to the Shammai Chagiga, that the Olas Re'iya must be more money. However, Beis Hillel argued, Beis Hillel Omrim HaRe'iya Ma'o Kesef, the Chagiga Shtei Kesef, it's the opposite. The, Shal the Olas Re'iya is one unit of silver and the Shammai Chagiga is two units of silver. Why did Beis Hillel give preferential treatment to the to the, to the uh, Korban Chagiga, to the Shammai Chagiga? She Chagiga Yeshna Lifnei Hadibor because we have actually a circumstance in Torah where the Shalmei Chagiga existed before the, before the Dibor, before the Torah came along, says the Gemara, it says Rashi, excuse me, Rashi's halfway down an inch above where we are, Dibor Hamaschel Yeshna, Lifnei Hadibor, Kodem Matan Torah, Hikrivu Shlamim Besinai, that before, before we had the episode of Matan Torah, uh, a Shalmei Chagiga was already brought, and then the Gemara continues, Masha'ein came Biri'ya, so Beis Hillel has a different argument altogether. He says that we have preferential treatment for the Shalmei Chagiga because uniquely that showed its face before Matan Torah and therefore there must be something special about it. And furthermore, says Beis Hillel, another reason to say like I do, says Beis Hillel, that the Korban Chagiga should be more money. Matzinu binisim, we find by the Nesim, Shariba bahena kasush bishlamim yosemi olos. We see that the Korbanos by the Nesim, that there were more shlamim than there were olos. 
So obviously we have a variety of uh, machlokos here, a variety of ideas, I should say, between Beis Shammai and Beis Hillel. Not all of them agree with one another, and we're going to have to smooth out all of the wrinkles between them. So let's get into why it is that one doesn't hold like the other. It says the Gemara a little bit more than halfway down, almost two-thirds of the way down. U Beis Hillel, my time alo amre ki Beis Shammai. Why is it that Beis Hillel, who holds that the Shalmei Chagiga should be more expensive than the Ola Asriya, why doesn't he hold like Beis Shammai? So we had said in the Gemara, after all, the Ka'amris Re'iya Adifa, to Ola Kula Legvoa, Adaraba Chagiga Adifa, to Is Beis Achilos. Beis Shammai wanted to argue against Beis Hillel that the Ola Asriya is better because it's Kula Legvoa. Beis Hillel says that's not the right argument. The right argument is a double usage of this korban. A chagiga is better because part of it goes to shamayim and part of it goes to people. One is up to heaven and one is down here on earth. That's better than one that's kula legvoa. So they just have a general machlokas about what type of korban is better. A, better, a korban that's only consumed by Hashem, which is Beis Shammai's approach, or Beis Hillel's approach, no, it's better when it's eaten by two people. And then when we look at the machlokas, when we look at the argument of Beis Shammai, and when Beis Shammai wanted to argue, I know why an Olas Re'i is more because on Atzeres there's more uh, Olos than there are Shlamim, says, says Beis Hillel back to him, that's not a good argument at all. Done in Korban Yachid, mi Korban Yachid. We need to be learning about a Korban Chagiga from another Korban Yachid. They ain't done in Korban Yachid, mi Korban Sibor. And we cannot learn it from the Korbanos of Atzeres, of Shavuos, which are actually Korbanos Sibor. And therefore, Beis Hillel circumvents both of the questions of Beis Shammai. What about on the other side? Why is it that Beis Shammai doesn't agree to Beis Hillel? U Beis Shammai, my time alo amre ke Beis Hillel. Um, so they answer as follows. The reason why Beis Shammai holds the way they do is as follows. When Beis Hillel said to Ka'amris Chagiga Adifa Diyashna Lifnei Adibur, when Beis Hillel used the argument, oh, we see that before Matan Torah there was a Korban Chagiga, says the Gemara, Re'iya Nami Yeshna Lifnei Adibur. It's not just a Korban Chagiga, that we also have a we also have an Olas Re'iya that was brought there, and we're going to learn about this more in a minute. And what about Beis Hillel's second argument? Ude Ka'amris Neilaf Mi Nisim. If you want to say that we should learn from the Nisim that the Chagiga there's more chashev and there were more korbanos shlamim than there were olos by the nesim. Done in davar hanogeg noheg ledoros, mi davar hanogeg ledoros. We need to learn korban chagiga from something that lasts forever. But what happened by the nesim is vein done in davar hanogeg ledoros, mi davar sheino noheg ledoros. We're not allowed to learn about a korban chagiga from something that was a that was a flash in the pan, a once historical event of all the korbanos of the nesim. So Beis Shammai doesn't like the way the Beis Hillel is learning. Oh, we're going to learn from the nesim. You can't learn anything from the nesim. It's a one-off in history, and therefore it has has no precedence in halacha. Then the Gemara asks a very important question. It's a question that uh, is a sore thumb. It's a, a really a hard question for Beis Hillel. Remember, Beis Hillel had said that the reason why he holds that the Shalmei Chagiga are more important was because there was a Korban Chagiga that was brought before Matan Torah. Beis Shammai pushed back and said, there was also an Olas Re'iya. Why are you saying that it's only the Shalmei Chagiga that were brought before Matan Torah? So this is the question the Gemara is asking of Hillel. Or why is it that when you looked at the Pasuk in Chumash Beis Hillel, you said, oh, I see there's Shalmei Chagiga that existed before Matan Torah. How did we know? Oh, so that's a Shlamim. We see that that was before Matan Torah. Basically, the Gemara is asking a black on white question to Beis Hillel. You can't just take half the Pasuk. If you're telling me, Beis Hillel, that the Pasuk indicates from the words Zvachim Shlamim, uh, that therefore there was Shalmei Chagiga prior to Matan Torah, you also have to read the rest of the Pasuk that says Vayalu Olos, that there were also Olos, which is Olas Re'iya. So how do you ignore that? The answer is the Gemara, and this is going to get us into the conversation for the next uh, Amr of Gemara. Because Sabre, Beis Hillel, they were of the opinion that Ola Sheik Rivu Yisrael Midbar, when the Pasuk says Vayalu Olos, as it relates to the Jews when they were in the Midbar, that wasn't talking about Ola Sreiya. Olas Tamid Havoy. That was talking about the parsha, the korban tamid that was brought every day, tamid shel shachar, tamid shel ben harbaim, and therefore, when the Pasuk says Vayalu Olos, that wasn't talking about Ola Sreiya. Was? Oh, it's coming. Oh, wow, it's coming. Yeah. Coming, coming, coming. Yeah. Why are you saying that about today? Because then. Where I'm coming, Mishnah told me Mishnah told me. Oh, oh, from the word time. Oh, oh. Yeah, that was a good word in there. Yeah, I was there for that. I was learning Daphne, so I didn't hear the whole thing, but uh, oh it's a beautiful deal. Tell me later. 
So then says the Gemara, oh, beautiful. So Beis Hillel gets out of the pickle. Right? He was presented with this Shaila. The Pasuk says, Vayalu Olos. How do you say that it wasn't Olas Riyah? He says it was Olas Tamid. It was a different korban altogether. So therefore, the only korbanos that were brought prior to uh, Matan Torah, as it relates to Achag, was Shalmei Chagiga. Uve Shamai, what does Beis Shamai hold? Beis Shamai says that when the Pasuk says, Vayalu Olos, Savre, they hold that Ola Sheikribu Yisham Bamidbar, Olas Riyah Havoy. Taka, it was an Olas Riyah. Fine. Fine. And now the Gemara paints a picture of a long-standing machlokas, three against three, within the world of the Tanoim. Omar Abai. Abai presents the three shitas on one side. Beishamai v'Rabbi Elazar v'Rabbi Shmuel. Really, Beishamai is a is a Tana. The other two are Amoraim. Uh, no, they're not. Rabbi Shmuel. No, that's not correct. It's got to be Rabbi Eliezer. No, is that changed? Yeah, it should be. It should be Eliezer. Yeah, it has to be Eliezer. That makes more sense. Beishamai v'Rabbi Eliezer v'Rabbi Shmuel. These three Tanaim were all of the opinion. Kulhu sviru luhu Ola sheik rivu yisro b'midbar Ola sriya havoy. They held that it was an Ola sriya. And the other side, uveshelo v'Rabbi Akiva v'Rabbi Yosi aglidi kulhu sviru luhu Ola sheik rivu yisro b'midbar Ola tamid havoy. So just a machlokas. We don't know historically what was taking place in the midbar prior to Matan Torah. When the Torah says va'yalu olos, were they talking about the olas tamid? We don't know. Or instead, were they talking about the olas riyah that took place on particular holidays on the shalosh regal? We don't know. It's a big machloka. It's a big chasm. Three against three. The three rabbis against the three rabbis. And now we're going to learn sources for all six of their opinions: the three on one side and the three on the other. Let's start with the camp of Beishamai. The camp of Beishamai is that when we said va'yalu olos, it's referring to olas tamid. It's talking about the part the korbanos tamid. Says the Gemara Beishamai had amran. That was his explicit source that we just saw right here. We know that he holds that it's um, that the Vaya'alu Olos is referring to Olas Tamid. What about Rabbi Shmuel? We'll see soon that this is not a simple shita. Rabbi Shmuel, the Tanya, the Mishnah right, the Brisa writes, Rabbi Shmuel, Omer, Klolos Namru Sinai. General rules were said on Har Sinai. However, not all of the halachos were listed at Har Sinai. Upratos, more of the details, were listed bit Ohel Moed. Very different. That's when the Jews built the Mishkan. And therefore, there was a lapse in time between when they learned the Klolos at Har Sinai and when they learned the Pratos by Ohel Moed. So therefore, um, uh, Rashi goes into the details of the history a little bit based on the Pesukim, but therefore, as we'll see soon, Rabbi Shmuel will be of the opinion that it was obviously not the Korban HaTamid, and we'll get there shortly. Rabbi Akiva, Omer, Rabbi Akiva argues against Rabbi Shmuel and says, Klolos upratos namru b'sinai v'nishnu b'olmoi v'nishtalshu b'arvos moa. Rabbi Akiva was of the opinion that at Har Sinai, both Klolos and Pratos were listed at Sinai. V'nishnu, they were repeated in Ohel Moe. V'nishtalshu, they were said a third time b'arvos moa. Now, if you want to say that that which was brought in the base, uh, that which was brought in the desert was about the olas tamid, we have an inherent problem with saying that because according to Rabbi Shmuel, who says that the clothes were taught at Har Sinai. And the protests were taught at a later time. Mi'ika midi, could it be that there was ever a scenario that in the beginning, right after Har Sinai, when they were bringing korbanos, we would not have had to do the korban tamid with hafshit v'nituach, with skinning the animal and cutting it into pieces? Why would that have happened? Because that's not in the klalos of the Torah. That's in the protos of the Torah. So therefore, if right in between Har Sinai and Oel Moed, according to Rabbi Shmuel, where only the klalos were taught on Har Sinai, then the way that the Korban Tamid would have been brought was without Hefshid Ben Ituach. Ula the Sof, and at a later point, once we got to the time in history of Oel Moed when all the details were shared, boy, Hefshid Ben Ituach. It can't be. It can't be that when it says Vayya'alu Olos, that it's talking about the, part, the Korban HaTamid. Because if so, there would be a time in history where we did it without Hefshid Ben Ituach right after Har Sinai, before Ohel Moed. And then after Ohel Moed, and even before Arvos Moab, we would have been doing this even with Hefshe Ben Ituach. And the Gemara can't fathom a possibility where the Korban Atami was brought in two different ways over the course of history. Therefore, it must be that when the Pasuk says, by Yalu Olos, it wasn't talking about the Parshas Atamid, the Korban Atamid, it was talking about what Rabbi Shmuel holds, which is that we are talking about Olas Re'iyah. And Rabbi Eliezer, should say Rabbi Eliezer, Titania, what does the Pasuk say? Olas tamid bahar sinai. That's what the Pasuk says. And let's see how we explain this. Rabbi Eliezer, Omer, ma'aseha ne'em rubi sinai, bihi asma lo korba. Yes, it's correct. The actions were taught to us at Har Sinai, but we did not even start doing the korban hatamid at all during that period of time in history. So we have a three-way machloka as between the Tanaim here as to what happened post Har Sinai. Option number one is that the korbanos was the korban was not brought at all. That's shita Rabbi Akiva that we just learned. Option number two is a shita of Rabbi Akiva above. 
Um, sorry, that was a sheet of Rabbi Eliezer. Rabbi Eliezer says it was not brought at all. Rabbi Akiva Omer Karva Veshuv Lo Paska. It was brought at that time without any hesitations. And the third sheet that we saw earlier was Rabbi Shmuel that it was brought the wrong way in the beginning without Hefshet Benituach and then later with Hefshet Benituach. Anyways, that substantiates the sheet of Rabbi Eliezer. Elamani Mekayim. What then do I understand from the pasuk of Hazvachem Umimcha Yigashtim Liba Midbar Bayim Shana Beis Yisrael? How can you say Rabbi Eliezer that Behi Atzma Lo Karva that we didn't bring the korban? How 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 can that be possible. The Pasuk says, You brought me a korban for 40 years. How can you tell me that there was no korban brought? So says the Gemara, you're right. That's a great question. The Gemara responds, You're right. Most of Klai Yisrael Taka did not bring it because they were of the Avodah Zara. Uh, bad news for the Jews. But over here, we had some tzaddikim. We had the Shevet Levi. Any, any representatives of the Levi tribe in the room? Not the obvious. He's a he's a, a he's a lady. coin. What? I'm a Suffolk lady. A Suffolk lady. Wow. Didn't even know that was a thing. Okay. Do you get lady of these? You don't. Do you get Eastern? Maybe an idea of Kuba, but then it was it was crossed out, and then we we had an so that we are a Levine, but it was from someone who's not Shomer Shabbos, so it's a, it's a Suffolk lady. Wow. <laughs> Fascinating. Yeah. Very Never. fitting for you, Joe, because that's what she did with Sal. I don't know. I don't know what's going on in here anymore. I know what a basketball. He's my coach. Danny was my coach back in the day. We'll discuss that another time. Okay. Anyways, that's what the Gemara says about the Shita. Uh, in the Gemara that holds that how can you say that no korbanos tami were brought? Hare the Pasuk says that that korban was brought. The answer is only Shevet Levi brought it because they were still righteous. Hein he kribu All right, it's let's a mood go. killer right there. What? It's a mood killer. The what? God's call you saw in the Midbar. 11 out of the 12 tribes. Done for. Not most of the time, just to go like oh, the golden cat. <laughs> no, I, of course, but we're talking about in the Midbar. For those 40 years, Four years. the only people who brought the korban tami were, were Levi. And no one else was uh, rowed. It does beg a larger question of chiyuv. Like, how do you fulfill? Did they have an obligation, but they were putter? Oh, yeah, I get it to the... Okay, fine. No, we are saying is it the What? Okay, but that... Yeah, I mean, what, what the Gemara doesn't discuss is the mechanics of the Isser here. It was it usser for them to bring it? Like, we don't... That we don't know. We don't understand exactly what's going on. What did you say, Danny? No, no. They were saying, well, don't the Levine always participate in the group? But according to the first the Rashi says that they were the Levine that paid for the time. So I guess the other tribes weren't coughing up the money for the... Yeah, Rashi does say, he krivu hamishalahem. But I still, again, we have this. We don't have time but on for this. But I, I would be curious as to what the mechanic, like, why... why Okay, we, we've all done a lot of Averas, but I'm saying, and I, and I understand that Vodazara is a biggie, so that's fine. I understand don't bring the Korban, but what does that do with Levi paying with the Korban themselves? I don't know. All right, let's get into the other side of the coin. So all of these three Shitas, the Shita of Beishamai, of Rabbi Shmuel and Rabbi Eliezer, all of these three Shitas were of the opinion that when the Pasuk says, so it's not talking about the, the Korban Atami, it was talking about Ola Sriya. What about Beis Hillel? Hada Amram, we saw sheets on the previous page. That was how he got out of that question. The question was very simple. Why didn't you register the Bayalu Olos to be Ola Sriya and agree to Beis Shammai? And there he said, because it wasn't Ola Sriya, it was Ola Stamit. So that sheet we saw. Rabbi Akiva Hanami da Amram, we saw a sheet a few lines ago where he said, black on white, the Karva Veshuv Lo Paska. And Rabbi Osi Aglili was the next opinion. Third of the way down, Vava Mebe is the tiny, the Bryce writes, Rabbi Osi Aglili Omer, Shalosh Mitzvos Nitzavu Yisrael Ba'alosam Larega. There were three mitzvos that were commanded to the Jews. When they did Aliyah Larega, Reiya v'Chagiga v'Simcha, the Shalme, the Olas Reiya, the Shalme Chagiga, and the Mitzvah of Simcha. And the Gemara says that each one has a uniqueness. Yesh Reiya, Shein B'Shtehem. There's something unique about Reiya that doesn't apply to the other two. Yesh B'Chagiga, Shein B'Shtehem. There's something unique about Chagiga as well. Yesh B'Simcha, Shein B'Shtehem. Let's go through all three. Says the Gemara, Yesh Reiya, Shein B'Shtehem. What's the uniqueness of Reiya that doesn't apply to the other two? Shal Reiya Ola Kula Legbo, Ma Shein Kin B'Shtehem. That the only by the the Olas Reiya. Does the entire korban get consumed and go up to a kodesh baruch Reach nifrach l'ashem? All of the others are eaten by people as well. Yesh bechagiga. I didn't skip, did I? No. Yesh bechagiga mashe in b'shtem. What's the uniqueness of chagiga relative to the other two? It says the gemara she chagiga yesh na lif ne dibor that the chagiga that existed prior to matan torah mashe in mashe in b'shtem, which wasn't true by the others. And yesh besimcha mashe in b'shtem and she has simcha noheges ba noshem uvin noshem mashe in b'shtem that the mitzvah of simcha applies both to men and women. It's uh, seemingly not time bound. However, the other ones are more limited.
So that uh, highlights the sheet of Rabbi Yossi Aglidi because he said the Chagiga was Lifnei Adibur. That's how, that's what he holds. The only Chagiga was Lifnei Adibur. So that shows us that he is of the same opinion as Beis Hillel. And then uh, we had said about Rabbi Yishma, we quoted his opinion earlier. Rabbi Yishma was on the, on the er earlier side of the coin that when it says the when the Pasuk speaks about Olos, that it's referring to Olas Re'iya. So says the Gemara, hang on one second, we're halfway down, Rabbi Shmuel. My time a kamuk mislaki Beishamai. Why is it that Rabbi Shmuel was of the opinion that it's like Beishamai, that Olos are referring to Olos Re'iya, mm -hmm. not Tamid? Says the Gemara, because we had said that he sal to Daitach, that Olas she'ikribi Yisrael midbar Olas Tamid Havoy. That had it been the case that the Jews were bringing the Korban Tamid in the Midbar, me, Kamidi, the same argument we saw above, we're going to flip it on its head. Could there be a scenario We had explained earlier that the reason why Rabbi Shmuel was compelled to hold like the Shita of Beishamai, that when the Pasuk speaks about Olos, that is talking about Olos Ri, is because it can't be talking about Tamid. Why can't it be talking about Tamid? Because according to Rabbi Shmuel, since only the Klalos were given at Harsina and the Pratos were given later at, at the Ol Moed, Therefore, the initial phase of the Korban Tamid would have been without Hafshi Benitoch, because that was only taught later at the Ol Moed. So therefore, it can't be that it was the Korban Tamid that was brought. It must be that there was the Ola Asriya. Says the Gemara, that's a terrible argument. The Gemara says two-thirds of the way down, Black on white. We have a Brisa that clearly indicates that the assumption of Rabbi Shmuel is wrong. Rabbi Shmuel said it's not possible that the Korban HaTamid was brought initially without Hefshe Bini Tuach and then later brought with Hefshe Bini Tuach. We can't have such a, we can't even fathom such an idea. Says the Gemara, yes, we can. Titania, the Brisa writes, Rabbi Yossi Agli the Omer, Ola Shikri Bishrava Medbar, Eina Tu'una Hefshe Bini Tuach, Lepish Eina Hefshe Bini Tuach, Elba Omni Olmo Elach. Yeah, absolutely. So that means that this Gemara tells us that Rabbi Shmuel is absolutely categorically wrong. You thought there was no possibility of there being multiple phases of the Korban Atamid, where in the beginning you don't do Hafshim Bini Tuach and later you do, says the Gemara, you do. What does the Gemara say in response to this? Sami Mikan Rabbi Shmuel. Erase the sheet to Rabbi Shmuel, he's wrong. Rabbi Shmuel is not even part of this discussion. Whether or not the Pukim say, the Pukim say, Sorry, just in case you can hear me, that uh, we it, it couldn't be the case there. Bishmal's right because we have precedence for the fact that the Korban Atamid could have been brought in different phases. Next, last question for the day says the Gemara as follows Boy Ruchizda, Hai Krahechi We don't know exactly how to read the following Pasuk. First, let's read it in its initial text. I'll read it here uh, and translate. The Pasuk says it's a Pasuk from Sefer Shmos, Vaishlach Esna Are. The, uh, and he sent the children of the of Bnei Israel by Yalu Olos, and they brought up Olos by Yisbechu Zivachim Shelamim Lahashem Parim, and they slaughtered. Uh, no, I'm reading the full pasuk right now. The, okay. Yeah, the word Kfasim is not in the Chumash, and you'll see in a minute why that becomes important. So that's how the pasuk reads by Yisbechu Zivachim Shelamim Lahashem Parim. So now the Gemara wants to understand. Uh, wants to try and understand this pasuk. Says the Gemara as follows: olos. Do we then say what type of olos were they? They were kvasim. And then the pasuk continues: zvachim, uh, parim. And then the end of the pasuk, when it comes to the zvachim, when it comes to the shlamim, we're talking about cows. O dilma, or perhaps idi idi parim havu. Or maybe we don't split the Pasuk and say that the beginning, that the Olos are talking about Kvasim and the, the, the end of the Pasuk is talking about cows, the Shlamim. Which one is it? So says the Gemara, well, before we bother answering this question, Lamai Nafkamina, who cares? So the Gemara for answers two different answers. First of all, Marzucha Amar Lepisuk Ta'amim. One is in regards to how we do the cantillation marks. How do you, how do you lay in the Pasuk? So just A, we should just know that all of the cancellation marks that we have were done Maruba. They, they were not flippant. It wasn't like, oh, let's put the Tzalisha over here. Everything was done b'chachma. Every, of course, it should, shouldn't be a surprise, but the laning is not stam. And that's why some people are super makbed on trap. They try to hit every single one. Is it le'ikuba? The Shulchan Aruch doesn't quote that it's le'ikuba if you do the trap wrong. But when a person is kind of just kind of filling in for laning and they don't really know what they're doing, they should know the asnachta. And the psik, they should know where each pasuk is. The halfway mark, the upside down fishbone, the adnachta, and then the end of the pasuk as well, and everything else we're not really mocked up. So that's answer number one, is that if in fact kvasim is present, so then we need a psik by the olos, by ya'alu, olos, right, in theory. And then had it been that they were all the same korban, not kvasim, but they were all parim, then we would say by ya'alu, olos, by parim, all the same, right? We're just going to keep going until we get all the material in. 
that wouldn't have been the exact drop because that was terrible. But you get the point is that we wouldn't have put a comma in the middle. That's answer number one is the reason why we need to know which korbanos the first part of the pasuk we're speaking about was speaking about was in order for uh, for tshuva. And the second answer of the, the Gemara presents four lines from the bottom. Ravacha the Rav Amar. The difference could be as follows. What if a person accepts a korban upon themselves? The Omer Hare Alai Ola Ki Ola Yisrael Bamidbar. They say I'm gonna. I, 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 they make a nether to a Kaddish Baruch Hu that they're going to bring an Ola just like the Jews brought in the Midbar. We don't know what that is. Is that Kvasim or is that Parim? We don't know. So the Gemara says, my, do we say Parim Havu or Kvasim Havu? We don't know. And the Gemara responds with a Teku. We'll stop right here at the very last line and pick up Emir Hashem tomorrow with Davzain. Wishing you all a beautiful night. Can you language point of view,